Okay, All right. Good afternoon to everyone um, who may join and watch this video later on. So to be clear, I do these things on Friday nights, but after the talk that I did um, last Friday on how we discipline um, kids, um, the following Saturday something happened, um, which I think uh, this is good to share because it's sort of tied into the whole how do we discipline kids um, talk. So yesterday when I spoke, um, I spoke about uh, creating a framework within which we discipline our kids and then the fact that we need to be deliberate and um, reactionary um, with the way we teach our kids and then the fact that when we are um, reactionary we need to focus more on the corrective actions and not just the correcting where we discipline um, our kids. And then I also mentioned um, some other parts of discipline, uh, which was more about teaching the kids rather than just um, stopping them from doing something wrong or correcting them when they do something um, wrong. Hi, Erasmus. Um, and then I then also spoke about the fact that we need to create mental pictures um, for our kids so they can see um, the impact of what they're doing um, and be aware of how it affects people around them immediately and also how it may affect them or people um, in the future. So, you know, so creating scenarios for them to be able to envision um, what a lack of discipline can do um, to them and the benefits of being disciplined. Um, then I gave some quick examples about that um, to do with simple things that we could do in the house to um, teach them um, the act of, of, of being disciplined. Um, now, in my previous uh, um, Facebook lives, I've always said um, that when it comes to parenting, um, every every moment um, that we have with our kids is actually a learning moment, not just for the child, but also for us, the parent. So we need to be continuously looking out for these learning moments, and these learning moments will be constantly coming. Um, and in fact, one of the learning moments came um, to me the following day after I did this talk on, on, on discipline. And that's why I thought, oh, I'd come and quickly share it before I totally forget um, about it. I was going to really type it out on Facebook, but I think I think actually speaking to it will create a better um, impact than just typing it. Um, so yesterday when I was speaking about the discipline, I said that um, types of discipline could include um, teaching your kids things like self-control, um, checking the quality of what they do is good, and having a sense of pride in what they do, um, following through uh, with, 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 with actions and being able to envision um, the little steps that need to be taken to complete um, a task and also envisage um, the knock-on effects of them completing that task. Um, and then also um, having an awareness of themselves or their surroundings or things that are going on of people's um, emotions um, and how they're affecting people's emotions and then also um, the discipline of initiative um, which includes also a sense of planning and foresight and then also teaching of the discipline of being responsible so you know responsible for their actions and um, I was saying that you could do little things like for example create um, rules for their bedroom so their bedroom will be their ecosystem and then you sit with them and create rules for their ecosystem within their bedroom and that then sets the tone for where um, you can then go in and um, enact little bits of discipline um, so you go in there in the bedroom and say well did you dress your bed this morning no you didn't i used to use your initiative it takes a bit of discipline to be able to think about that and say oh no when i wake up i need to dress my bed so they have their own little ecosystem which is their bedroom you sit with them, you create the rules and the framework for that little ecosystem within which um, they'll practice discipline. And because you sit with them and create these rules, you know, they'll be able to buy into um, the rules um, a lot more and be able to reason through why they need the rules and how the rules is going to help them manage the little kingdom, which is their bedroom. Um, so this, this is something that is pretty good that you could do um, with, your, with your kids. Very simple. It's actually quite powerful. And you'd be surprised the kind of feedback that they will give you um, when they start discovering stuff about why this rule didn't work or why that rule works. 
um, and they'll be able to understand more when you discipline them um, why they've been disciplined because they were part of setting those rules and setting that framework for their little kingdom which is their bedroom so was it Friday I went into a bit more detail about uh, following through as part of the examples of discipline now on Saturday however um, something happened again with with my daughter um, and what happened was that she woke up in the morning you know brushed her teeth and then came straight away sat in front of the TV put on her favorite cartoon and she was watching the cartoon so I woke up uh, went to the living room went to sit down I was just watching it and then I asked her, I said well have you brushed your teeth she said yeah dad I brushed my teeth I woke up I dressed the bed um, I said a little prayer I meditated a bit thought about what I need to do in the day um, and then I just came to sit and watch the cartoon for a while because I wanted to relax so then I said well why are you watching a cartoon where you could be doing something else for example you could be practicing the piano because um, she just done a grade three a grade three exams which she passed she's preparing to go and do the grade four but she's got this thing where you, if you don't tell her to go and practice the piano this girl will not practice the piano and i've been trying to get her to um, use her own um, initiative you know to get up and practice the piano by herself without being told to practice the piano so i said look why 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 are you watching the tv why don't you just get up and go and practice the the piano that's 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 something that would engage your mind a lot better than sitting down and watching uh, cartoons for an hour two hours in the, in the in the morning so she got up you know reluctantly trudged over to the to the to the piano uh, sat down switched the piano on you can see that she was she was a bit annoyed so i just sat there, I, was, I sat there watching her annoyed switched the piano on but he just started nah, 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 playing the piano so i said oh no, no stop you know you can't be practicing without your your um your books because she has books uh, for sight reading and skills and all these other things so i say you need to go and get your book you've been taught that you have to do warm-ups first do your skills your arpeggios chromatic skills all these kind of things you know your c majors etc you have to do all that stuff first warm up then you can play some of your your, your pieces and then you can then do some sight reading where you're trying to task your brain to try and understand <clears throat> new um, styles of of, of, of music so she sort of looked at me was like, oh, you can see that she, she really didn't want to play the piano. And then it just sort of clicked in my head that, you know what, let me just keep persistent with this thing because what 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 is actually being built here at the moment is actually a level of discipline, not just the initiative part, but more the, the perseverance part, where um, obviously she doesn't want to do it, but sometimes you have to do things that you don't want to do. Sometimes you have to do things where you're feeling you know mentally that you cannot be bothered you can't be asked to do it so i told her i said look now um, what's one of the mantras that we we we, we say uh, when we're having these kind of uh, feelings and then she went oh that sometimes we have to do things that we don't want to do and i went yeah sometimes you have to do things that you don't want to do sometimes mommy and daddy have to go to work in the morning and we're just tired but if we don't get up and go to work you know, money isn't going to come um, home. So sometimes you have to do things that you don't want to do. And then I said, uh, so what, what would you call that? What way would, would describe that? And then she said, she said, she said uh, uh, yeah, torture. I went, oh, <laughs> how, can you, how can you say torture? I said, no, it's not, it's not torture. He said, yeah, it's torture because I don't want to play. I want to watch cartoons. I said, yeah, I know you don't want to play, but, you know, sometimes you have to do things that you don't want to do um, and that it's called perseverance and that when you when you when you build that kind of uh, discipline of perseverance it builds a lot of resilience and it builds a lot of um, character um, you know there's no point in doing things which are always easy which always makes you relaxed and happy sometimes you have to push yourself and do things which are outside your comfort zone because it releases another level of uh, um, courage um, within you which is just potential and to actually you know fire it up so I'll tell you that look if you, you were watching a program uh, the other day uh, by a guy called Bear Grylls and this dude is like climbing mountains and doing a whole lot of crazy stuff that any normal person would not do or any normal person would originally at first uh, sight think that it's scary to do 
you know. And I said, the more he does these kind of things, the more, you know, he feels that he can conquer the world and do anything that he wants to do, you know, because he never keeps himself in the, in the comfort zone. You know, he's, he, he's learned to try and do things that pushes um, the limits um, that he has, and that helps him to face certain things, certain fears um, that he has. And, and what he needs to be able to do that is perseverance. You know, so I was having this chat with her, then she started playing the piano. You can see she was angry, so the way she was playing, she was actually expressing her emotions and anger by the way she was playing. It was quite nice, actually. So I told her, look, hey, the way you're playing the piano, uh, you're expressing an emotion. What sort of emotion are you expressing? She said, saying, it's anger. And I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see, so the music, the piano, actually helps you to express uh, an emotion. So music is actually something that helps you to express um, emotion. So you're angry, but you're expressing that anger through the way that you're playing the music. So even though you're persevering with trying to play the music, you're also actually, it's actually also helping you um, because it's actually helping you also express um, that emotion through the, the, the music. So you're persevering and you're actually releasing um, that energy that you've got inside you, um, which is, which is um, the anger. And then I said, so it may be anger, but what is the other flip side of anger? Because um, on my previous um, topics that I've spoken about, I spoke about the, um, uh, what's it called, the emotional wheel. Um, how we use that to try and help our kids manage their emotions and, 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 and become a bit more emotionally intelligent. So I said, what's, what's the other uh, flip side of anger? You said, oh, yeah, determination. I said, yeah, exactly. So for you to be able to persevere, even though you're feeling angry, if you can step um, back a bit and channel that anger into um, determination, that then helps you to persevere. So she just all looked at me, started shaking her head, and then she went back, she went back to the piano and continued, da, 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 continued playing the thing quickly and said, okay, I'll finish. And I said, no, you haven't finished. Play it again because you only played um, uh, C major once. You have to play it five times. So play it again. So she she played it once, twice, and I played it twice. I said, no, you still got three more. Play it again. I was intentionally doing that and intentionally annoying her because I just wanted her to keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing. So after a while, I then, I then said, look, I stopped and I said, I said, how, how are you actually? Tell me about how you're feeling. How are you feeling? He said, well, yeah, I'm feeling, I'm still feeling angry. But, um, you know, the anger is sort of starting to um, die down now. But I just want to get the thing done now. Um, so I said, yeah, you want to get it done, but are you actually enjoying what you're doing? Then he said, uh, not really, I just want to get it done. So I said, okay, so you've gone from anger to wanting to just get it done. I said, now let's try and move now to you actually trying to enjoy what you're doing. And let's see what happens with the anger. So she just kept going on and on and on and on and on. After a while, I think she realized that and I wasn't going to let us get up away from the uh, from the piano. <laughs> so, so she's like, she played one piece, really nice. I said, oh, that's a really nice piece. The way you played it is very nice. And then she went, oh, it? okay, okay. And all of a sudden, her mood just changed. And the way she played the pieces, I mean, it was just fantastic, fantastic. I mean, she really expressed the um, the 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 music, uh, the dynamics of the music. It was it was, it was really beautifully um, expressed. So um, I told her, I said, look, so you see, you've 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 been behind the piano for probably also probably about an hour, hour twenty minutes or something, and um, you've gone through this full range of uh, emotions. Um, you battled with it. Um, you've seen how it's affecting the way you are playing. You've seen how um, you actually, the emotions actually were expressed in a way that you were, you were playing the, uh, the music. Uh, you've managed to get the emotion and channel it in a different way um, to actually finish doing what you're doing in a more positive light. So then I, I looked and I said, um, so what, what's happening at the moment is that you've actually gone through about an hour, 20 minutes of, of, of persevering, where you're doing something where, which you really didn't want to do, but if you want to be the best, you have to do it. Um, you're doing something which, you know, you didn't get up to say you wanted to do, where you were relaxed doing something else, and then all of a sudden you're thrown into going to do something else. You weren't happy, but you had to do it. So I said, look, this cartoon that you're watching, I think she was watching um, Frozen or something. I said, this cartoon that you're watching and you were singing uh, the song, Let It Go, Let It Go, my God, I've heard that song so many times. That song just pisses me off now, seriously. Some of you, the parents out there who've got daughters will know what I'm talking about. When that movie came out, my God, 
It's like every single day, let it go, let it go. I'm like, yeah, let it go, let it go. Stop, stop bloody singing that song. <laughs> anyway, so, so I was, I was like, um, you know, the song, this song that you're, you're, you're singing and you're really enjoying. I said, have you actually ever thought about who composed that song? I said, oh, yeah, I know who composed it. So she mentioned the person's uh, name. And I went, yeah, but have you ever thought that that person being a musician used to be like you? And then she said, what do you mean? I said, well, the person didn't all of a sudden get up one day and, um, you know, coined, composed, uh, let it go. The person started off as a child with their parent um, also battling, um, doing piano lessons and going for music lessons and all that sort of stuff. And the person persevered and persevered and persevered and persevered, practiced and practiced and practiced, honed the skill so much that now you are the one who's benefiting from that person persevering. And he sort of, she, and she just sort of looked, looked up at me and then smiled. And then she said, so that means that if I don't persevere, I may be denying someone in the future the pleasure of my talent. And I said, exactly. And you just exactly nailed what uh, we're trying to, we're trying to um, get across here. That if you don't persevere and you don't hone the skills that you've been given or the opportunities that you've got, not only may you uh, deny yourself the opportunity of realizing your potential in the future and becoming famous or rich or whatever other kind of goal um, may occur, but you are also denying someone the opportunity to also benefit from that talent and benefit from the pain that you've gone through to actually hone that talent. You know, the perseverance that you went through, the resilience that you had to build, the, 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 the months and the hours and months of practice um, that you had to... Uh, yeah, John, I know I'll do it on YouTube. <laughs> My brother keeps telling me, do these things on YouTube. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do it on YouTube. I just, I'm just a bit lazy to go onto YouTube. I'll do it on YouTube. I'll set up a channel and then probably re-record everything on, on, on YouTube. Um, yeah, so you are actually then denying um, um, someone that opportunity to actually benefit from your pain that you went through because you you go through pain. And so what you were doing right now was going through pain, having to persevere because you didn't want to do something um, that you knew you had to do because you were in your comfort zone watching the cartoon. But imagine if the, the person who wrote Frozen hadn't persevered. Imagine if the person who, who wrote Frozen hadn't gotten up and practiced the piano as many times that he or she had to, you know, gone for the music lessons, um, dealt with the rejection, etc. You wouldn't be sat here today with the millions of other kids out there disturbing their parents with let it go, let it go, and all that sort of stuff. You know, so you're benefiting actually not just from someone's talent, but you're benefiting from someone's pain. You're benefiting from someone's um, perseverance and resilience. You're benefiting for someone's consist, cons, um, consistent um, uh, practice, you know. And he started looking and said, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you, you can see that she had a, um, a eureka, a eureka uh, moment. It was, it, was, it was really nice. It was, it was, a, it was, it was a good uh, father-daughter uh, moment, uh, connection there. Um, yeah, so um, I just thought I'd come and share it uh, because that's another aspect of, of discipline. Um, I think I've said it before that sometimes we need to just uh, be a bit tough on our kids and, and let them build that resilience. I think if if we if we let them see that they're benefiting from um, people who have also been through what they're going through and who have persevered and built the resilience, um, they will see that um, when they also do the same, they'll also be hopefully in the future. Um, bringing joy um, and moments of magic to other people. Um, because I'm sure through the Frozen song has blessed a lot of people in several um, several ways and brought a lot of joy to a lot of kids' um, um, hearts and, and families' um, hearts. So yeah, so this is what I just thought I'd uh, quickly come and talk about before um, I totally forget. Um, I don't usually do it on Sundays, but it just came to me and I thought, oh, I better come and say this before before I get. So, yes, yeah, so let's teach our kids uh, perseverance and how to be uh, resilient from the viewpoint of actually letting them see that mental picture of, of what other people um, have also had to go through for them to enjoy what they're, um, what they're enjoying. So that they understand that life is, is, is normal. It's, uh, persevering is something that's normal in life. You're going to have to go through it. 
um, because that's what builds um, the character. And that's what makes um, you and other people actually appreciate um, the gift and the talents that you, you, you bring on board. So uh, enjoy the rest of your, your, your weekend, your Sunday, guys. And um, hopefully on Friday night, I'll come and speak on another topic. Um, if anyone wants me to talk on anything specific, just send me an inbox and I'll, um, I'll do some research and then I'll come and talk on it. So let's, let's, let's keep parenting our kids. Uh, let's keep raising the next generation of, of superstars and, uh, and uh, help our kids to unearth the, the potential. Um, the, best, the better we do our job, the better um, society will be. Uh, for me, when people are appealing to government for this and that and whatnot, it just shows the fact that we failed as parents. I mean, we really, if we do what's right as parents, um, we'll end up raising leaders and, and, and human beings and individuals that will actually um, be a benefit to um, society. Um, so yeah, parenting is for me is the greatest uh, job um, on this earth. So have a good guy, uh, weekend, guys, and um, I'll catch you guys again on Sunday. Bye.